Hi, Carl Willis here, and uh, welcome to my house. Let's go into my kitchen, where I have a little baking project going on. And uh, this baking project involves neutrons. You may be, uh, you may remember the uh, the James Bond movie Goldfinger, where the villain's whole gambit is to make a bunch of gold at Fort Knox radioactive and thereby increase the value of his own supply. Um, that's actually not too far-fetched. In fact, what I'm doing right here is I am cooking a gold coin with neutrons in order to activate the naturally occurring gold 197 and form the radioactive gold 198. And it's true that if you had enough neutrons, you would not only make the gold very dangerously radioactive, but you would decrease its value by transmuting it into uh, fairly inexpensive mercury. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, how this setup works. We've got all these polyethylene bricks. Polyethylene is a uh, neutron moderator. And we'll go ahead and take these off from around where the source is. getting there. And there we go. So what we've got in here is a neutron source. Uh, happens to be a uh, homemade one. It's a, uh, about a six millicurie americium beryllium source. Making use of the alpha N reaction on beryllium makes about a thousand neutrons or two thousand neutrons per second and there's a shiny beautiful piece of gold that's a pure or, or three nines uh, gold coin some sort of Canadian thing anyway so that's what we've got uh, of course we are making neutrons they are detectable uh, with a helium-3 detector The neutron source makes fast neutrons, and uh, what we need to uh, activate the gold are slow ones. So, hence all of the plastic. We want to reflect as many neutrons back in there with as low as low an energy as possible in order to uh, to get them to uh, be captured. <coughs> excuse me, be captured in the uh, gold. Anyway, <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take this and go look for the uh, the gamma rays that. Uh, that are coming from the radioactive gold 198. So we will uh, we will leave my my kitchen temporarily. And we will go back to my guest bedroom. Germanium detector. We are going to uh, do a gamma spectroscopy experiment to identify uh, potential gold 198 in this coin. And first we will make sure that we have adequate liquid nitrogen in here. Oh yeah. Looks good. Almost full. Germanium detectors uh, require uh, cryogenic temperatures so that the uh, so that the uh, thermally generated uh, uh, charge carriers in the semiconductor are kept to a minimum. And the way we're going to do this guy is with a piece of tape. Tape is kind of my nemesis when I'm holding a camera. And we're going to put this guy inside. You can actually see the germanium detector back in there and that's exactly where this is going right up on front of it. Okay. Try to get that to stick in there properly. Very good. Actually that's ugly as sin. Get this more 
centered. Little bastard. And that's respectable. Okay. Now I'm going to roll the door shut. The lid on here weighs more than I do. It's a, not necessarily easy to move. We'll set the camera there. And close that door. Boom. Okay. So there you have it. The gold coin is in there. The germanium detector is ready. We've got that germanium detector hooked up to a multi-channel analyzer system made out of these modular nuclear instrument modules. Uh, signal comes in on this, uh, this coaxial cable here into an amplifier where it is amplified and the shape of the, uh, the pulses is, uh, is, uh, is improved. Uh, then it goes in as digitized or the analog signal is turned into a digital one. And then uh, signals are stored in a memory control unit that is accessible by the computer. So, looking at my wonderful Carl's MCA program, written in LabVIEW, uh, this, uh, this software accesses the uh, memory control unit and we get a pulse height spectrum, or a histogram of energies. And I'm going to hit start. Actually, we'll set a time preset and why don't we set that for one hour. We're going to set this for 3600 seconds and I'm going to hit start. And so we're now accumulating pulses. Each of these pulses represents uh, a gamma ray that has been detected in that detector and uh, we are going to be looking for a gold 198 gamma ray at the energy of 477 kilo electron volts. And on this pulse height spectrum, we expect that somewhere in this neighborhood. So, we've cooked our gold with neutrons. We've uh, hopefully made it radioactive, but of course we won't be able to know until there's sufficient counts in the uh, spectrum. And let's... Uh, leave this for one hour and I'm going to go back out here and prepare some lunch. And when lunch is over we'll go back and uh, hopefully we'll have a statistically reasonable uh, number of uh, counts in that spectrum. So, that'd be feeding time and we're going to go ahead and uh, turn this guy off. Done. Okay, so we're back. It's been an hour and uh, the uh, count has concluded. We see that the, uh, the MCA has stopped. The data has been, uh, has been saved and uh, the system is now standing by idle. So we finished our, uh, finished our experiment. Let's go out and look at the, uh, the gamma spectrum that we got on a larger screen. We'll just look at that right here and the camera will take a minute to get adjusted to the uh, to the brightness. What we've got here is a gamma spectrum that ranges from zero uh, energy on the far left side all the way out, out to uh, <coughs> excuse me out to 800,000 electron volts on the right side and we notice the major features of this uh, spectrum are of course a very large peak here at 411 keV. This is a gamma ray emitted frequently when gold 198 decays to mercury uh, by emitting a beta particle. So this right here is evidence that we've neutron activated that gold. Down at the other end we have a couple peaks that are below 100 keV. These are, uh, these are closely spaced um, x-ray lines. Uh, some of which result from the decay, uh, others of which are just part of the uh, background in the spectrum. We do have some other sources of radiation here. These are from radon daughters. These little little peaks are uh, from stuff that's in the air. It's been a windy day in Albuquerque today, and that explains why we have relatively high counts of radon daughters. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. 
Um, the message, of course, you can make radioactive gold in your home, in your own kitchen, should you desire to do that. Um, it is possible to turn gold into something far less valuable using uh, neutrons. And uh, so if you have any uh, delusions of uh, grandeur or megalomania that needs satisfying, uh, you can do what Goldfinger did. And uh, of course, you'll need a pretty large neutron source uh, to do that. But, uh, but nonetheless, within the realm of plausibility. So thanks for watching and uh, have fun.